Namaste and welcome back to the DSA classes. Today, my dear friends, we are going to explore a brand new data structure. Of course, it is not new because you have certainly been using it in different ways when you learned either Java or Python. And I, my friend, I'm talking about the linear data structures. Now, what are the linear data structures? If you ask me, there are four linear data structures. Arrays or what we call in Python as list. Link list, stacks and queues. These are the four data structures. Now, why are they called as linear data structures? Because they store data in a contiguous manner. One next to the other, they store the data. That is why they are called as linear data structures, right? More about their properties, we will explore in depth. But in order to progress to link list and then stacks, then queues, First, the most fundamental data structure, which you as a programmer are going to be using repeatedly in your life, is nothing but your arrays or lists. I hope you're able to think. So, let us start arrays and lists. In depth, we shall look at it, okay? So, to warm ourselves up initially, I want to be solving some basic programs to get an idea, right? Just to warm ourselves up. Then we will tackle all your Google, Microsoft, Amazon problems that can be asked on our race, right? Anyways, first and foremost, what I would like to do is, I would like to now write a program to perform linear search. Now, what does linear search mean? Assume this is an array. I want to search for 40, if 40 is there or not, or any element for that matter. How do you perform search? This is only your concept of linear search. Now, searching is a very important operation. We will be looking at different searching algorithms which are more and more efficient, but let's begin with linear search. Now, what is the principle or idea behind linear search? It's quite simple, okay? So, basically what happens in linear search is, assume this is the array or list given to me. Now, all of you know, arrays or lists are index-based data structures, which means every element or every cell has a position attached with it, has an index as a, attached with it. And you know, the index that, the indexing that we follow in programming is zero-based indexing, which means from zero the index begins and it goes to four, which means I have five elements. Any confusion? Now, I'll call this as A. Now, let us assume I have a variable called as key inside which I have 40. Now, key is usually the name that we call for a variable inside which we have that value which we are searching for. That is what is called as key. Any confusion? So, I want to search for a key called as 40. Now, how will you do that? Very simple. I will run a loop which begins from the first index goes all the way till the last index. How can I write that as code? For i starting from 0 to the length of the array. Length of the array means I am going till the end. Any confusion? Now, inside that what will I do? What I will do is, I will check if in case the element present at the ith index, so a of i, is that equal to key? I am just checking. If it is equal to key, I have found my element and obviously I have to return the position at which the element is present or the index. So the index is in i, so I will just return i, right? So this is the code of what we are trying to do. Now let us assume uh, I run the loop, so i starts from 0, obviously if a of i is equal to key, no, condition is false, i moves forward, condition is false, i moves forward, condition is false, i moves forward, condition is true, so I will return 3, it is at the third index, any confusion till this point of time, beautiful. Now this was a case where the particular element is present, but what if it was not present? Well, let us change the key. Let us assume key is 99. Now, as you can see, if I start my loop at the 0th index, it will be false. I will move false. I will move false. I will move false. I will move false. Again, I will move outside the boundary. So, obviously, your iteration will stop. So, you went the entire length of the array, but you did not find 99. So, if the control comes outside the loop and this condition never satisfies, it clearly means that you have not found the element. Since you have not found the element, I will return minus 1. Minus 1, if I return, it means that I have not found the element. So this is the most basic search that you can perform. One thing that you can clearly notice through this example is, if the element you are searching for is not present, you will be iterating through the entire length of the array and keep checking. 
which means this operation you are performing n times if n is the length of the array n times you are performing it i hope you are able to think which means the time complexity is big of n clearly this is not efficient are there more efficient searching algorithms definitely that we will look at it later but this is the time complexity of linear search now let's just quickly go write the code as you can see i have a linear search function written which accepts an array a and a key which is again an integer so inside that i'll just run a for loop which is going to uh, iterate over this array a so int i equal to 0 i less than a dot length i plus plus and inside that i'm going to come and i will just now check if in case a of i is equal to the key if a of i is equal to the key then uh, clearly you can notice inside that i will just uh, return i and then uh, if at all within this during the execution of the loop this condition never satisfies i will come outside the loop if i come outside i know i have not found it so i'll return minus 1 Right? And as you can see in the main method, I have initialized an array A with these elements. Key has been initialized to 40. I have called linear search, pass A and key. I will cut that and put it inside system.out.println. Whatever it returns, we will just print it. Okay. So if in case I go and I execute this piece of code, as one can notice, you have got 3 and yes, 0, 1, 2, 3. That is where it is present. If I, re if I initialize this to 99, then you know it is not there so clearly one must be getting minus one and that is exactly what we will get as the output so i hope everybody understood this problem right so this was just a small warm-up class now uh, with respect to the time complexity i already told you it is a big o of n and now we will have to go further and look at few more searching algorithms with respect to arrays and lists and let's do that so catch you in the next class